In this video, we take a look at the Duke's animated series from 1983, a fun spin-off of the live-action Dukes of Hazzard TV series that was a top 10 smash up until John Schneider and Tom Wopat went on strike, that is. The cartoon had a storyline that never ended, filled with a few mind-blowing goofs and mysteries no one ever bothered to solve, or at least attempt to explain on the show. The Duke boys and Daisy are on a race around the world to earn prize money to save the farm. And Boss Hogg and Roscoe are racing against him, so Boss can foreclose on the farm and win the prize money. But who is giving the prize money? There's no other racers and there's no mention of exactly who is sponsoring the race. Was it just a bet between the Dukes and Boss Hogg? That can't be really, I mean the Dukes had no money. They needed the prize money just to save the farm. And then there's the mysterious disappearance of Coy and Vance Duke, voiced by the live-action TV Dukes at the time, Byron Cherry and Christopher Mayer. In 1983, when this cartoon came out, John Schneider and Tom Wopat were on strike for a bigger cut in all the profits the Dukes of Hazzard was generating. You know, all the toys, lunchboxes, posters, etc., etc. You know, as understandable as that might be, you know their leaving actually hurt the show to the point it most likely killed most of the profits that they were trying to take part in. No. Too bad they all couldn't come to an agreement, but no. that's another topic for another day. At any rate, Coy and Vance were the dukes of the show at the time. Now, I hadn't seen this cartoon since I was a kid. I just recently bought the DVD set, and so I guess this was like the second time I watched it. The biggest laughs I got came from Boss and Roscoe, voiced by Sorrel Book and James Best. They brought the same hilarious fun they had on the live action series to, to the cartoon and, and then some. The nerve of them dukes sneaking up on us fair and square like that. Oh, hush! Uh, what's your firecracker for, Boss? It's the 4th of July, right? It's the middle of the winter, you dipstick. You digit! You know what you are? You're another Scrooge. You even sound like your name was Scrooge, and my name was Bob Scratchit. You mean Bob Cratchit? Him too. But back to the Dew Boys. They just up and disappeared in season two after Bo and Luke came back to the live action series. At least on there, we had an explanation. We saw the old Dukes arrive in town and Coy and Vance take off out of town. But in the cartoon, they were in the middle of a worldwide race. Right in the middle of it, and Coy and Vance just magically become Bo and Luke. I know they thought kids don't usually pay attention to plot details, but if two people magically become two other people, then kids notice. Believe me. I mean, I did. They could have said something, just some kind of explanation, but nope, nothing. To make matters worse, the start of the race is depicted in a new intro in the second season, and as the race starts, we see a sign that says, Good luck to Bo, Luke, and Daisy. Did we start a new race? Is that the explanation? Then who won the last race? And if the Dukes won that race, the farm should be okay now, right? And if Boss won the last race, then Uncle Jesse would be homeless or paying extremely high rent to Boss. And as much fun as this show was at times, again, mostly thanks to Roscoe and Boss Hogg, it would have been really nice to have an ending of some sort. But no, the race never ended officially. In fact, in one episode, it looked like it might be getting near the end as they were released in America in the second to last episode when the Dukes were in Hollywood, but then they ended up in the Philippines on the last episode. Now, how do you drive from Hollywood to the Philippines anyway? You know, there ought to be a law for television. If you start a story, you have to end the story with one final episode. Well, at least the Dukes made me laugh, and the ending was less consequential because as the live-action series was still on, as a kid, you might automatically assume the Dukes won the race and kept the farm, but most series don't have another version of themselves to fall back on. Jumpin' gee hossafat, it's a hornet's nest! <laughs> In the episode, tells of the Vienna Hoods. Bo and Luke have replaced Coy and Vance, of course, in this season, but who keeps replacing them? Just in case you forgot, here's how they normally sound. Let's make a break for it. You got it. There's these strange voices coming out of Bo and Luke that aren't them. I wonder what those fellas are looking for. This episode was worse than the Super Friends for voice goofs. Maybe my transmission's slipping. You're right, Daisy. Who's gonna pay to see a band with fellas that old? What do you think's going on? 
beats me, but we better get out of here. So that's why those fellas were following us. They were after Cindy Sue. It'd be nice to go see some entertainment Saturday night if them famous musician fellers is playing anywhere near town. We gotta work our way back to General Lee, then light the heck on out of here. Oh, I, I gotta warn you about the theme song. If, if you listen to it too much, it'll get stuck in your head and you'll never get it out. I mean, never. And, and it plays in my head right now. Oh, Uncle Jesse, played by Denver Powell, was on the series as well. He was such a good actor. I love seeing him on reruns of Andy Griffith as Briscoe Darling, which is awfully close to Roscoe, isn't it? Just a little bit. I never thought of that before. And then there was this uh, there was this role as Mad Jack, the mountain man on the life and times of Grizzly Adams. I loved that show as a kid. You remember it was a series about the, uh, I guess, the frontiersman with the uh, giant bear as a pet? Of course, uh... He was in way too many things to list. Uncle Jesse would read Daisy's letter that he'd get every week detailing the Duke's adventures to a new character, an animated raccoon named Smokey. Sure, I'll read Daisy's postcard. It's funny, though. The Duke's farm didn't look nothing like the main TV series. The Duke's Hazard was a house was always wide in the series, but in the cartoon, it looked more like Uncle Jed's cabin from the Beverly Hillbillies, before he struck oil, that is. Other notable additional voices from Saturday Morning's past included Michael Bell, John Stevenson, Bob Holt, just to name a few. Michael Bell was Bruce Banner on the uh, 80s Hulk cartoon. He was on a lot of other stuff you probably remember, like the Super Friends. Coincidentally, Bob Holt was the actual voice of the Incredible Hulk, on that 80s cartoon. I did a video about that if you'd like to check it out. And of course, Scooby-Doo's Fred Jones and current Scooby-Doo voice, Frank Welker, was the voice of Roscoe's dog, Flash, who in this version is wearing a hat. You know, the more research I do on cartoons, the more I realize that Welker is on everything. I begin to think he surpassed Mel Blanc in number of series and characters that he's voiced. Uh, I just did a video recently on Wonderbug and there he was, the voice of Wonderbug's alter ego, Schlepgar. He just keeps popping up. All in all, there were only 20 episodes made of the Dukes. The cartoon, that is. You can get the whole series on DVD at Amazon if you get the nostalgic bug and want to relive part of your childhood. Like I said, don't get too invested in the story. But, you know, you'll love Roscoe and, and Boss Hogg's antics. It's, it's hilarious. And the stories, you know, individual stories are pretty interesting. It's just the fact that the main story, the race, that never concludes. I enjoyed the episodes uh, the most where they took the most advantage of being a cartoon and integrated more fantastic elements like the episodes with leprechauns. But he's the bad one. This one's too stupid to think for himself. Well, thank you. I appreciate the good word. Did you? It's Loch Ness Monster, the Christmas Carol Ghost, a genie. It seemed a little bit of a waste to deal with more realistic stories that could have been taken straight from the main series, you know, like this one story about a crooked horse race or the Dukes get thrown in jail for the umpteenth time and have to catch the real crooks. I just think they should have uh, wholeheartedly embraced the fact that this was a cartoon series and took complete advantage of that fact. And one other thing, should Roscoe have been wearing his uniform outside of Hazard County other than for, well, character identification, I suppose? I have to be honest, though, I really did enjoy watching this series again. This series was fun, despite all the goofs and piles. It's always fun going back in time, I guess, reliving your childhood. Of course, this is the TV Crazy Man channel for classic television, but if you like animation, I'm also working on another channel called Freddy Cat Cartoons. Uh, I'll put a link at the end of the video to one of my newer cartoons I just finished. It's more of a project I'm working on to bring more family-friendly kind of stuff to, uh, you know, for kids to watch and families and stuff. Anyway, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Please uh, comment, hit the like. Uh, I want to know what you think about the video. Uh, hit that bell for future notifications. I think a lot of times you'll miss new videos if you don't have that bell hit. So please consider doing that. And I hope y'all have a great day. Oh, goody, goody, go, bro. Sick it.